If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. And I'm going to continue to share with you a truth that I cannot get away from concerning vision and cause in your life. 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, David coming on the field of battle in verse 29, listen to young David. They said that he said, I believe that he shouted, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Proverbs 29, 18 said, where there is no vision, the people perish. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 said, write the vision, make it plain so that all can see. Paul said in Acts the 26th chapter, verse 19, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. So there's a very strong biblical foundation for the word vision. Where there is no vision, people perish. Write the vision, make it plain so that all can see. And then what started on the road to Damascus had not diminished in Paul's life. If anything, it had matured and increased in its value and its impact on Paul's life. When Paul said, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. Now we've said some of the same things, but I want, I want you to hear it, hear our heart as we're going forward. You see, a vision is wonderful. Thank God for a vision. We hear so much about it in the kingdom of God today. A vision keeps us on course. It's a starting point. It's, it's a compass that keeps us directed in the midst of the storm. There's so many things that we could say about a vision. Corporations have vision. Almost any corporation has a vision. A vision is a very, very important part of all that happens. The problem with a vision is, be it in a church or a corporation or someone's life, that a vision can be set aside. A vision can be the biggest thing in our life and then as a child our attention is diverted and we go another way. It, the same thing can happen in a corporation. I mean, what's the big thing today? Maybe nothing tomorrow or nothing next week or nothing next month because you see a vision can be shelved. A vision can be put on the sideline. And if it becomes too expensive or too frustrating or too demanding or we just lose the passion for that vision, it's amazing how many ways we can go to get away from that vision. Remember the vision's a starting point, a foundational beginning, a motivation to move forward, a compass to stay on course, a wake-up reminder on slow days, a defined plan of action to keep us on course. But the thing that God has shown me and I want to just keep ministering until you see my heart and hear where I'm coming from. The vision must grow from a vision to a cause before anything significant happens. Paul's vision had become a cause because in Acts the third chapter, he said, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. David coming on the scene of battle or would be battle said, is there not a cause? He went beyond vision. The vision that David had of the lion, the bear, being faithful to the sheep, being obedient to his father, the vision exploded and became a passionate cause. And even going to the life of the Lord Jesus in the 18th chapter of John's gospel, he said, this is the reason that I was born for this purpose. I came into this world for this cause, for this cause. You see, a cause is more than a vision. A cause is total commitment. 
A cause is not optional. A cause is something that, if I could be just real blunt about it, a cause is something that you're willing to give your life for. It's more than singing a patriotic song. It's more than singing, oh, how I love Jesus. It's more than just coming to church. It's finding something, finding a cause that you're willing to give your life for if needs be. Now, to be sure, there are causes that are not immediately church-related. If you're married, there's the cause of having a good marriage, being committed to that. You have children, there's the cause of being a good father, a good mother, a grandchildren, a good grandfather, a good grandmother. There's the cause of being faithful on your job. There's the cause of being a true friend. There's the cause of just doing what's right because it's right, not because someone is looking, but the cause of I'm going to do what's right. And that's a decision that has to be made obviously many times in the world in which we live. But I want to go to the heart of the matter. It was in the month of June that God began to deal with me in a series of changes that God has brought in our life even since the storm. A vision's wonderful, but how easy we can pack up and leave a vision. A vision's wonderful, but how easily we can put it on the shelf and say, as the soldiers had said, you know, Goliath coming down, it's a good vision. Someday, maybe someone will bring him down or maybe Goliath will just go away. They had a vision of no more Goliath, but it wasn't a serious vision. David comes into the camp and immediately he leaps from vision to cause and he said, is there not a cause? And from that moment forward, he proved that his words were not idle words, but words that he was willing to lay everything that he was and everything that he had on the line to see those words literally come to pass. Now, what does that have to do with us today? Well, I believe God has a message for us today, and I want to share that with our heart. Talking about vision and cause, God, I believe, is raising up people in the world in which we live that are willing to find God's cause for their life. Millions of people are just existing. They're not really living. They're just existing. Millions of people just go to church, just go to a job, punch a clock, do this, do that. But there's no passion. There's no commitment to what they're doing. As I looked into David's life, from the moment that David cried out, is there not a cause, his life was forever changed. And because of the passionate cause that David embraced, his life was forever, totally, completely changed. Because of David's passionate cause, Satan's best laid plans to strike terror and fear was broken and destroyed in David's life and in the camp of soldiers that he entered and in the nation. talking to someone that said, when I was younger in the ministry, I was all fired up and I thought I could change the world. But I found out since then that that's not realistic. Well, you're looking at a preacher that by God's grace until the last breath I draw, I believe that God has me in this world and God called me in the ministry and God called us together to make a difference in our community, in our city, in the Metroplex, in the United States of America, and we're making a difference in different parts of the world. But you'll never make a difference as long as you have a passive vision because you wake up one morning and you don't feel like doing it and you say, well, so what? But when there is a cause burning in your heart, sometimes we have to back up and punt. Sometimes we have to go at it from a different direction. But when there is a burning, passionate cause in your heart and in your life, you're going to stay with it until you see victory or until God says it's enough. I believe that with all my heart. 
So we've talked about David and is there not a cause? And we've talked about Paul who said, for this cause I bow my knees before the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if I could go further, I would like to call your attention to some other folks that had a passionate burning cause in their life. And might I say this? Only faith can turn the tide of fear and the tide of terrorism and the tide that would kill all of us if they could. Don't have enough planes, bombs, guns, bullets, armies. Only God can turn this world around in which we're living. But I was thinking about the mother of Moses. You know, you just can't raise children for God nowadays. It's just too hard, too many things against us. And so you just go with the flow. No, not the mother of Moses. And you know the story how that baby Moses was hidden and how that he was placed in that little basket in the water and how the daughter of Pharaoh came down to the water. And it just so happened that the mother of Moses just happened to be. <laughs> you know, folks were the cause just happened to be at the right place at the right time. And she was there and was entrusted with raising the life and teaching and training the life of Moses. She had as great an impact in and upon Moses' life as she would have had if she had had him at home except Pharaoh's daughter was paying the bills. Interesting scenario. God knows how to save your children and do it in very unique ways. She did such a job, you say, well, he shouldn't have killed the Egyptian. Well, I wasn't there. I don't know what went on. But let me tell you this, Moses turned out all right. And Moses turned out to be one of God's great leaders. But it all comes back to this. It's because the mother of Moses had a cause. When everyone else says you just can't save children nowadays, you just can't teach children, you, you know, these are changing times. Every couple has always faced this big question, is this too bad a world to bring a little baby into this world? And I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There has always been a challenge. There will be a challenge. There is a challenge. But God's greater than every challenge because God loves children and God loves babies. I've seen many a grandmother actually become a stronger force in a child's life than a mother because there was absence of certain things. I think of Samuel's mother. She wanted that baby. She wasn't trying to get rid of that baby. She was praying for a baby. And God called her to the attention of the man of God. And that baby did come and Samuel was a blessing. Speak blessings over your children. I know that's hard sometimes. And I know that's challenging sometimes. But speak the word of God. Speak success. Speak blessing over your children. Even on the day when it seems most unlikely. Samuel's mother had a passionate cause and her request was granted and Samuel was born. And they were wonderful, wonderful examples to the uh, to the kingdom of God. You know, I just think of Timothy's mother and grandmother. Paul said, I call to remembrance the faith that was in your mother and the faith that was in your grandmother. Listen to Pastor Bob Nichols. Your faith is a seed that lives on and on and on and on. You never lose when you walk in love. You never lose when you walk in faith. You never lose when you walk in hope. And I look at Timothy's mother and Timothy's grandmother and Paul said, I know that there is a faith that has come through and I know that that faith is growing and I know that that faith is going to continue to be a blessing. Paul was very conscious of the seeds of faith that had been planted in young Timothy's life and Paul loved young Timothy so dearly. I was thinking even of Dr. Edmund Lewis Cole we talked a number of years ago before he went into his ministry. I saw the passion in his life. I heard it in his voice. 
And even though it was a very difficult time in our existence way back when, I said, we've got to plant some seed in this ministry, and we did. He never changed. His conversation never changed. The cause never changed. It was not a vision to put on a shelf. It was a burning, passionate cause in his life. Well, I looked at Jesus' mother, Mary. She had a passionate cause. Angel comes to her and says, something's going to happen to you that's never happened. Something's going to come forth that has never come forth. And you talk about a teenage girl being challenged to the max. In fact, she was so challenged, she said, how can this be? And oh, do I love the reply. I've lived on it for years. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. <laughs> how can it be? How can this thing come to pass? Only God. Only God. Only God can bring this to pass. The Holy Ghost is going to come upon you and God will bring it to pass. And then Mary said something that changed the world and changed all of us before we were ever born. She said, be it unto me according to the word of God. And I don't know of anything more scriptural you can say about anything than be it unto me according to the word of God. The moment Mary said, be it unto me according to thy word, her life and the world was changed forever. Let me give you some very quick insights, but important insights to this cause. Remember, we need to be part of a cause. Everyone needs to find a cause for their life. And that's why so many ministries and churches and so-called works of God are just drifting downstream. The church that's going to change the world is the church that has a cause. The pastor and staff that's going to affect change in their world is a pastor and staff that has found a cause. Not a vision that we can put on the shelf, but a cause. And they found a people that are going to stand with them in that. You see, First of all, millions live and die with no passionate cause. You meet them all the time. You can meet them in the coffee shop. You can meet them on the job. You can meet them wherever you go. There are people just bored with life. Just, I don't even know if they're looking for something to do. And the only scary thing about America it is, and I hope I do not sound negative, I don't think we honor the Vietnam veterans like we should. We have several in this room today. But folks, but for the grace of God going back to World War I and World War II, we could be speaking German or Japanese and things could be completely different in our nation except men like my own father and we have men here today that served in World War II. And then there was the Korean conflict and we have veterans here from that. Whatever you think about Vietnam, thank God there were men like we have in this room today and evangelist Dave Reaver who are willing to do what they had to do so this nation can be here today. You say, well, I don't agree with all of it. We're not into that. I'm simply saying there are people that bear the scars in their body today who are willing to step into a cause whether they understood it or not. And there are men that will be scarred for life because of their devotion to the cause of the Vietnam era. But millions live and die with no passionate cause. So many ministries, oh, I'm not being judgmental, but I mean so many. Well, you got a better church? Can I make more money than I'm making here? Could I, could I move out somewhere else and maybe drive a better? I mean, God have mercy. God has to call us to do what we do. Millions live and die with no passionate cause. Go to church, we sing, lift one hand, both hands we feel like it. You know, we say amen at the right places and we go on. Oh, God, stir us with a passionate cause. We can change the world. We can help affect change in the world. And we're doing a part of it, but not as big a part as we will be doing.
So first of all, millions live and die with no passionate cause. Secondly, with every passionate cause come impossible challenges. In fact, if it doesn't have impossible challenges, it's not a real cause. It's just an idea or maybe some kind of a vision. With every passionate cause comes impossible challenges. I still remember Lester Summerall saying it would be so interesting to do something that we were equipped to do when God called us to do it and that we had the funds to do it when God called us to do it. I could certainly immediately identify with that. Everything this church has done for 38 years has been impossible. So many things screamed impossibility, but God brought us through. You see, your cause will be bigger than you are. Your cause, a real God cause will always be bigger than you are, or you could do it by yourself and you'd probably forget to even ask God to help you. Every cause comes with impossible challenges. When we were presented with that challenge of raising up a television, 24-hour day television in Kampala, Uganda, I could not tell you, well, we faced, it was impossible to start the church and it was impossible to go downtown. It was, we've done a lot of, by God's grace, we've done a lot of impossible things. But there's one thing about it, I never forget to remember that to God be the glory, great things he has done. With every cause comes impossible challenges. Your cause will be bigger than you are or it's probably not a God cause. Your cause must be faced in faith not in your human ability, not in your personality, not in your charisma, but your cause must be faced in faith. Faith in God, faith in God's word. Every day the sun rises and sets, we need to remind our own heart that our trust, our total trust is in God. Also, God's passionate cause through you will change your life and countless others. We hear a lot today about politicians wanting to leave a legacy. I'll tell you how to leave a legacy. Find God's passionate cause. Get involved with it. And watch God change you. And watch God change others. I was thinking of one man of God that I knew years ago and it, the statement was made Watching him through the years, he started out with a tough marine exterior because that's what he had been, but called into the ministry. God did a work of grace in his life, and before the man passed away, they said we watched him turn from a hard, harsh, drill sergeant type of marine to a man of God of 1 Corinthians 13 love. Oh, that's what God wants to do. You have to have discipline. You have to have passion. You have to have drive to do what God calls you to do. But we cannot do it in our own strength. Somewhere along the line, our ability must be dissolved into his ability. And our dependability must be completely in him. Because God's passionate cause through you will change your life and countless others. I think one of the most humbling things that touches my life during these days for whatever it's worth. And I'm, set, I'm told this quite often. Pastor, you don't realize how many lives that you and Sister Joy, your lives touch. In a world of change, a world of transition, a world of instability. And I cry out every day to God, God, I know where I've come from. I know your strength and your ability in me. I appreciate people's confidence. God, help us to walk in faith and walk in obedience to God, to make right choices, to do the right thing. Because, folks, we need lighthouses. We need points of reference. Young ministers need to see somebody that's going the distance, that's staying the distance. And you see... Being a part of God's passionate cause, it changes us, but it also changes countless others. 
And one more thing I want to give you about God's passionate cause. It's all about souls and glorifying God. It's not about glorifying any of us. It's not about the name of the church or it's not about, you know, the applause or or people saying nice things. We've had some very nice things said about this ministry. We appreciate that. Had something very nice said the other day by someone that really surprised me. But when I heard it, I said, God, I give you all the glory. That statement would not have been made, could not have been made except for the grace of God. As Ed Cole said, makes about as much sense as the donkey that was the beast of burden that transported Jesus into Jerusalem, lifting up his hoof with a high five when the people were throwing down the branches and applauding. And, you know, the donkey said, thank you so much. My, my, let us be wiser than the donkey who just did what God called him to do. It was a beast of burden. The donkey was a servant. We're all servants. Sometimes you see people recoil in the ministry. Well, I'm just a servant. Honey, we're all servants. And the day you stop being a servant, you're out of the ministry and you're in bad shape in the kingdom of God. We're all servants. And thank God for the privilege of being a servant. But it's all about souls. It's a rare service in this church when souls do not come to Jesus. You know why? Because we expect that. We pray for that. We give altar calls for that. Well, someone says altar calls are old fashioned. (laughs) Boy, everything's being said nowadays. No, they're not. No, they're not. Thank God for altar calls. Well, that sinner's prayer that I heard Rex Umberg lead people in. Honey, that simple prayer has led millions of people into the kingdom of God. And if you mean it, it works. I remember more than one conversation that I had with my mother. And I remember mother saying one day, she said, son, she said, my goal in life is not to be famous, not to be wealthy, not to be well-known, But she looked me straight in the eye more than once and she said, my purpose and my cause in life is that you're not going to hell and you're going to fulfill the call of God upon your life. And the interesting thing about that is that mom is all over the world through her son or parts of the world. And though she did travel and I found out after the fact she was headed for Australia. She was there for three weeks, did Old Testament survey in three weeks. <laughs> Herculean task, came back. One day I heard her on the radio and I said, Mom, I heard you on the radio. She said, oh, I forgot to tell you, son, God opened the door here. <laughs> so I'm on the radio now. Well, she's on heaven's radio <laughs> for the last few years. <laughs> But I was just thinking about, you know, so many, so many people nowadays, oh, I shudder. We've birthed some more stars. Let's wait a few years, see where the stars are. There's only one star. There's only one star. There's only one star. And any star without that star, the sun is in trouble. So what's my life going to be? Where are the flowers? Where are the accolades? Where is it all going? To God be the glory. Great things he has done. And who was the famous man of God that said, it's amazing what God will do when he finds someone who will give him all the glory and take none of it. So another lesson on vision versus cause A vision can be shelved. A vision can become too expensive. And I know that there are changes that sometimes have to be made in spite of everything. But what God's looking for today in me and in you, and if this is not your cause, no hard feelings, but this is a pastor with a burning cause that we've just begun in many ways 
to fulfill that cause of God in the world in which we live. And I say to God, be the glory, great things he has done. God is the strength of Pastor Bob Nichols. God is the strength of this church. God is the strength of our Bible school, our Christian school. God is the strength of every ministry in this church. To God be the glory, great things he has done. But the beauty of it is that when I find God's cause and your cause and our cause becomes his cause, you just wait and see what happens because it's in the process of happening. The cause of God will not only change us, but the cause of God will change countless others. And throughout endless ages of eternity, we'll be rejoicing, not in how much money we made or lost in the stock market or how famous we were or how famous we weren't. We'll be rejoicing that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords.